Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch store on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And I have a link to all of these in my description box. There is some propaganda being spread in the press and throughout Star Trek and science fiction fandom that's really starting to bug me. They're saying that the President Trump stole the seal of the United States Space Force from Star Trek. This is utterly ludicrous if you know the first thing about history. Fortunately, I am a Fandai master, and that means that the fandom is strong with me, and that means that nothing is new, nothing is original, and at worst I figure it out about half an hour too early. This is neither a boast nor a brag. This is sadly where you find yourself after having watched, read, and listened to over a hundred years worth of science fiction. You just can't see the new stuff for the entire century that came before, and you find out there's just not that much that's new in the world. Also being a fan die master means that I know the precise history of the Space Force logo and can mansplain it to you in short order. I lived through most of it. Trump stole nothing. Actually, Trump didn't make this design. The president doesn't, you know, concern himself with that kind of minutia. They bring him a design two or three, and he looks at him and says, yeah, I like that one, and signs off on it. He didn't design this. But in any case, Star Trek actually took design elements from NASA's various seals. So let me explain this and show you exactly how this worked. The first time that the uh, current Space Force Delta was used was by the U.S. military in 1942 during World War II. It was part of the patch for the U.S. Army Air Force's 36th Fighter Group. The U.S. Army Air Forces would then eventually split off to become the U.S. Air Force. In 1959, NASA adopted two designs for their seal and mission patch. They both incorporated a stylized delta as well as a ring that symbolizes an orbiting planet. Now, as you can see from the seal on the right, the words National Aeronautics and Space Administration and USA are within a bounding circle. In the center is the stylized delta, this time encircling a planet representing Earth. There's a small sphere that represents the moon and a ring representing a spacecraft orbiting Earth. In 1965, six years after NASA adopted their seal and mission patches, Star Trek costumer Bill Tice designed the Delta used for the USS Enterprise and after 1979 for all of Starfleet. Both Bill Tice and other Star Trek The Original Series artists were always clear that their designs took elements from NASA and then they imagined what it might look like or evolve into by the 23rd century. In 1989, during the Reagan administration, the U.S. Air Force Space Command adopted the seal that you see here. The delta in the center was adapted from the, that used by the U.S. Army Air Force's 36th Fighter Group. And we know this for several reasons. The first is that the United States Air Force is on record repeatedly as saying that they adapted it from the U.S. Army Air Force's 36th Fighter Group. We also know just from the design elements, the shield and banner shape are identical to each other. And note that behind the Space Command Delta is a globe representing Earth. There are two ellipsoids circling Earth representing spacecraft, and there is a circle on the left of the globe that is not a star, and it represents the moon. Now, it wasn't until sometime after 1987 that Starfleet Command's signal seal was created. Now, I don't remember where it first appeared, but it was designed by Star Trek The Next Generation graphics artist Mike Okuda. Star Trek The Next Generation didn't begin airing until 1987, two years after the Space Command seal was adopted. Mike Okuda specifically took design elements both from NASA imagery as well as patches and seals used by modern militaries. Note the extreme resemblance to the 1959 NASA seal, with the addition being the Starfleet Delta, some stars, and then the color scheme. Finally, we reach the U.S. Space Force seal. It clearly uses the exact same delta as the 1985 Starfleet Space Command seal. There is the exact same globe behind it. There's an ellipsis that represents the moon orbiting the Earth, or a spacecraft, I'm not sure which. And then there is 
the star that's just above and to the left of the delta, and that represents Polaris, the North Star. Clearly, it was not the Space Force nor President Trump who stole design elements from Star Trek. In reality, the Star Trek artists from their beginnings in 1965 adapted NASA and other military design elements and then he tried to imagine what it might look like in the future if you evolved forward. Star Trek has, the designers have never been anything other than totally candid about this. And what the hell, what the hell, as long as I'm on a roll, let's have a look at another bit of United Federation of Planets lore. Because I'm pretty sure that at some point, someone is going to not know the history, and they're going to see the similarities between the Federation seal and other real-life Earth institution seals, and think that they stole it from Star Trek. So we might as well be prepared for when that comes around. So circa 1945, the United Nations, which was just getting started, adopted the seal on the far left. It appears both as a seal all by itself and on the United Nations flag. In 1969, Star Trek, the original series, showed the United Federation of Planets pennant one time on screen during the really terrible third season episode, And the Children Shall Lead. Frankly, the pennant is probably the best thing to come out of that very stupid episode. In 1975, graphics designer Franz Joseph Schnaubelt, using his pen name, Franz Joseph, designed a Federation seal that was published in his book, The Starfleet Technical Manual. It did not appear on screen until Star Trek Discovery's first season. As it was an original design, the rights to that seal were owned by Schnaubelt and after his death, his estate. The STD designers who used that seal did not obtain Schnaubelt's heirs' permissions. Their heirs will typically allow it for free if you ask, but they weren't even asked. If I were them, I'd sue CBS. But then again, I hate Star Trek Discovery. In 1979, a Federation seal was used in Star Trek The Motion Picture, and this seal would appear off and on in later films and media until 1987. And that was when Star Trek The Next Generation created its own seal that appears through Star Trek properties to this very day. So, we can see clearly that <laughs> neither the United Nations nor any other similar patch or seal such as that used by UNIT on Doctor Who stole anything from Star Trek. It was actually Star Trek designers who used existing design elements from other flags and stuff and they imagine it forward. What would it look like in the future? Now, there is one other bit of thing that I want to throw into this. I am extremely critical of the press, and I have been for about 40 years. And it's not really because the press is constantly misreporting everything. It's not because they're generating fake news, because that's not the right term for it. They are propagandists, plain and simple. Nazi propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels would be proud of them. Since I was 15 years old, 50, 40 years now, I have made a masochistic hobby of debunking the press. It's gotten to the point where if you give me any news story from any source, I can prove in 30 minutes one of three things. Either that the event being reported never happened, or that it didn't happen as reported, or when stripped of a slick presentation, opinion, emotionally loaded language, and unrelated filler, the facts devolve to a couple of paragraphs at best. And this is why I have a phrase that constantly scrolls past in every single one of my episodes. I change my lower third sometimes to be a little funnier, but that one will always scroll past because it is almost a secondary motto of my show. Nothing you see in the press is real. Nothing. Just look at how they're reporting about this stupid logo. And there's only one of two reasons that they'd be doing that. And the first is that they're too incompetent to do the research. Everything I just shared with you took me about half an hour's research. The graphics, crude as they are, and writing my script took me a hell of a lot longer. And the other, and frankly more likely reason in this case, that they are misreporting this is because of propaganda. Ripping off Star Trek makes Trump look like an idiot and some kind of propagandist or uh, plagiarist. It fits their anti-Trump propaganda. Now keep in mind that I am not a Trump supporter. I am a libertarian. 
and I would neither vote for a Democrat nor a Republican if you held a gun to my head. However, I also don't suffer from Trump derangement syndrome, a, a term that I've really tried to avoid using, but clearly it's the only thing that applies, but I don't suffer for it from it. I don't care a pair of fetid dingo's kidneys about any of these people. That actually makes me a better uh, interpreter of reality because I'm not coming forward with this with some kind of worldview that says that half of my fellow countrymen are evil. In any case, the press can't or won't get this simple logo right. So what does that tell you about the press? Nothing you see in the press is real. Nothing. G.I. And knowing is half the battle. Well, that's all I really have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. Thanks for watching. That is all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYO Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.